How should the United States respond to the growing Soviet and Cuban military presence in Africa? Tonight, two very different views of what the U.S. should do. McGovern versus Moynihan. Good evening. The growing count of Europeans killed by rebels in Zaire has given added passion to a new debate in Washington. How should the U.S. respond in the face of mounting Soviet and Cuban military activity in Africa? The Katanga rebels, now driven out of Zaire by Belgian and French troops, were reported to have been trained and armed by Cuba and the Soviet Union. French African leaders complained today in Paris that the United States was not aggressive enough in protecting them from communist-led aggression. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger says Moscow should be told that events in Zaire were endangering détente. Republican leaders at home want President Carter to take a tougher line with Cuba. Mr. Carter, who limited U.S. action to providing air transport in Zaire, is said to be frustrated by congressional restrictions of his freedom to act. The House has agreed to review those restrictions. The Senate leader, Robert Byrd, says there's no need to. Clearly, a major policy battle is erupting in Washington. Tonight, have the hawks and doves been reborn? Jim? Robin, the Cuban scorecard in Africa reads like this right now. There are six places where armed conflicts of various kinds are in progress, everything from minor localized skirmishes to major combat, as in the case of Zaire. Cubans, either directly or indirectly, are reportedly involved in at least three of them. In addition, there is a reported Cuban presence in five other African nations. Intelligence sources say the total number of Cuban troops now on the ground in all eight of those countries is more than 44,000. It is this activity, either on their own behalf or as surrogates for the Soviet Union, that has triggered the foreign policy debate here. And two U.S. senators in the thick of that debate are Daniel Patrick Moynihan, Democrat of New York, and George McGovern, Democrat of South Dakota. First, gentlemen, on the specific issue of Zaire. Was the United States action proper, adequate, and right? Senator Moynihan? Well, it wasn't much action. It seemed to have, seems to have worked. We provided the support we were asked to do, and that's all we did. Senator McGovern? I think it was about right. As uh, Senator Moynihan has said, we uh, provided some aircraft. We provided some uh, gasoline. We assisted the uh, Belgians and the French, and taking some of their citizens out of the uh, danger zone. Uh, beyond that, we made known our concern about Soviet and possible Cuban uh, activity there. Uh, I don't see any point in uh, overreacting as far as our own uh, uh, involvement there is concerned. Do you think we should have done more, Senator Moynihan, under the circumstances? No, but I, I would like to uh, start out perhaps by asking why does Robin McNeil think that there are two very different views between myself and Senator McGovern? There may be, but he doesn't know that. He hasn't heard our views. Well, we've read them extensively during the day. Uh, well, well, we'll find out. We'll find out. Obviously, as we've just found out on Zaire specifically, you feel that the United States action was, was, an, was adequate. Is that right, Senator? Yes. And uh, we shouldn't have gone any further. All right. Thank you. Robin? Yes, uh, we are engaged in a constant search for truth, truth, Senator Moynihan, and let's see how that emerges. How do you view, uh, how do you assess the threat that the Cuban and Soviet military presence in Africa presents to U.S. <coughs> interests? Let me begin where it all began, which is in the summer of 1975, uh, when Senator McGovern and I were in different positions and I think had a different perspective. I was the U.S. permanent representative at the U.N., Senator McGovern was in the Senate. It seemed to me that the, in the Senate, the question was being debated, what has the United States learned from Vietnam? Up at the UN, from my point of view, it seemed that the more important question was, what has the Soviet Union learned from Vietnam? And in particular, they seemed suddenly to have decided that we were a defeated country and that they were now free to move around the world doing what they would. And they came up with the most incredible invention of a third world weapon system. You ever, the Rand Corporation at its best could never have dreamed it up, the Cuban army. And they could go anywhere, kill anybody, and somehow maintain their legitimacy. My view in the administration at the time, 
let's say we must take the Russians to the United Nations, to the Security Council, and say, what are you doing? I made a speech in the General Assembly that said, just as the era of European colonialism is ending, suddenly the blue eyes reappear, whites with European weapons murdering blacks. What kind of behavior is this? Who is responsible? And of course, at that time, all of the leaders of the governments of Southern Africa were asking us to do this. President Kaunda was talking about the plundering tiger and its murderous cubs. It seemed to me there was no question of involving the United States military in any way, but there was a genuine question of bringing the Soviets to a world forum and saying, what are you doing and what does this imply for the other things you want to do in particular? How can we have detente with a country openly rampaging through Africa? It wasn't rampaging at that, but the rampage had begun and we now see that it has continued and say that one thing relates to another and you cannot expect our wheat, which they were then buying, you cannot expect our technology, you cannot really expect our trust if you behave in an utterly irresponsible way as they were doing and as, as in my judgment, they continue to do. So the, the, the threat to U.S. interests <coughs> is, is a psychological one and is also damage to detente with the Soviet Union as you see it. I don't know about psychological. The United States doesn't have any very special interests in Africa. What we do have is an interest in a world order in which people uh, and big nations like the Soviet Union do not equip mercenary armies and send them around overthrowing governments, killing, burning, raping. The horror in Zaire is pretty considerable, uh, evidently. And, and at the same time, act like that country is a member in good standing of the club of detente. The Russians have to learn that we will make a judgment about their behavior in large matters like the salt talks from the specifics which we see before us as in Africa. Senator McGovern, how seriously do you view the Cuban and Soviet presence in Africa as our interests are affected? Well, I don't uh, find myself uh, very much in disagreement with my uh, friend Pat uh, Moynihan in what he has said uh, thus far. I think it's perfectly proper for the United States to, to make clear at the United Nations in every other uh, possible forum that we disapprove of any country intervening in the affairs of the uh, people of Africa, and especially uh, intervening in a brutal uh, military uh, manner. Uh, I would say this, that I think uh, it's probably a greater threat to the uh, long-term standing of the Soviet Union and Cuba uh, in Africa than it is to us. I think uh, the Russians are going to have to learn uh, what other European powers uh, learned over the last uh, 75 or 100 years, and that is that you can't uh, police the uh, internal affairs of Africa. The British had to get out, the French, the Dutch, the Belgians, and the Portuguese, all of them after uh, bloody uh, struggles to stay on uh, were driven off the uh, African mainland. My uh, prediction is that if we can look down the, the road a few years, the uh, Soviets and the Cubans are going to run into the same kind of problems in Africa. It's not a very habitable place for white uh, uh, Europeans. I don't think it's a very habitable place for uh, black or brown uh, Cubans. Uh, and in the long run, they're going to have to learn the same lessons other countries have, that Africa is not going to be controlled from the outside. Uh, Senator Moynihan, that is a view one hears carried one stage further uh, w in the line, well, let the Cubans have their Vietnam in Africa. Why should we get sucked into the same quicksand? What is your response to that view? Well, at the time, <clears throat> in the Senate, uh, the, uh, the debate was very much uh, that the Cubans would go into Angola and wish they had not done. Uh, we have no evidence of that yet. The, uh, the, the idea that military force doesn't have consequences in small and, and really very, um, not disorganized, but, but countries with limited infrastructure to fight long, hard battles, uh, you win. Uh, you, they won in Angola. They haven't won completely. The, the Zabimbi forces of the Ovimbundu uh, tribes are, are still very much in the field. And as a matter of fact, for about a month now, this administration has been asking, uh, been talking to senators about sending aid to Zavimbi, which is a, a large question, obviously. But I 
do not think that on the record it is, it is now to be seen that the Cubans or the Russians wish they hadn't done this. And I do not think that was a very good argument at the time, and I said so, and Senator McGovern put some rather unflattering references to me in the congressional record, I remember, <laughs> at the time. Uh, the, the point is that, you know, you kill enough people and it works. And the idea that, the, that, that they will regret what they have done is not very persuasive to me. I remember very uh, precisely the behavior of President Kaunda of Zambia when the uh, Cubans first appeared. Kaunda, along with Senghor, along with a number of the President of the Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. were pleading with us to get involved. And let me, let me say on television, pleading with us to persuade the South Africans to get involved, to keep these other people out. We didn't. Not, we got involved in a rather dumb way with the CIA, and the Congress put a stop to it, and by December we had lost. And it was wonderful to see the change in the mood of Zambia. The Times of Zambia, which is Kaunda's paper, was pleading for us to come in, denouncing the Cubans. Then suddenly the Cubans have won, and the Times of, of Zambia changes its view completely. And on the January 11, 1976, they have an editorial which says, Welcome, Cubans, in effect, and now why don't you invade southwest Africa, Namibia, and South Africa itself? It's only that, said the Times could justify, sanctify, and glorify Soviet and Cuban intervention. The point is, there are consequences to losing wars, and uh, you saw people who were with us turning against us. If I, if I could just uh, comment on this uh, question, Mr. McNeil, it's not, it's not clear to me uh, just what the uh, Cubans have won in, uh, in Angola uh, or in uh, Ethiopia that is a fundamental threat to the security interests of the United States. Uh, I remember when we were arguing about whether we ought to send uh, American military support to one of the factions in Angola. As a matter of fact, we did send some $60 million of secret uh, military aid to the FNLA, as I recall. And, some, and to UNITAS. And to UNITAS. Uh, on the theory that the MPLA, the other faction in Angola, was apparently a, a threat to us, it's not clear to me that that's true. Uh, I, d I don't know the fundamental difference between those various factions that would have justified the United States intervening, and I'm very glad, frankly, that we didn't. I think we were right in protesting the uh, Cuban involvement. But we need to keep in mind, as Ambassador uh, Young has told us the last uh, few days, that the American uh, strategic interests in Africa are very limited. And uh, it's very dangerous playing around with military uh, intervention in that continent. Do, uh, you, do you agree with that, Senator Moynihan, that, mm -hmm. that military intervention for the United States is not an option in terms of this Cuban-Soviet uh, threat? I do agree, and I do agree that in the main our strategic interests are very limited in that part of the world, but there is a point that where this would not be the case, and that is when you get up to the Gulf and to the Red Sea. The Soviet success in Angola has led them next, the next major intervention was in Ethiopia. Um, if, if they now successfully surround Saudi Arabia with Ethiopia, with some part of Somalia perhaps, they're coming down to Afghanistan on the other side, uh, I have been, I've lived out in that part of the world. I was ambassador to India for two years. Uh, people think that way, and if it ever appeared that the Soviets, with their mercenary troops, were successfully surrounding the Persian Gulf and the oil resources of the Western world, there would be the most fundamental geopolitical strategic interest in the world. Do you agree with that, Senator? Well, uh, I think this is interesting because this program was described earlier as the hawks versus the uh, doves. I think it's becoming increasingly clear that there's not that sharp a delineation. I, I would agree. disagree. Uh, I've heard a lot of disagreements. Well, the Senator I, said he didn't disagree. With, you all didn't disagree, but go I, ahead. Uh, go I ahead. was just going to say with regard to uh, Saudi Arabia, now there is a strategic interest. There you've got almost half of the Earth's uh, oil supply. And it's one of the reasons in the uh, recent debate over whether we ought to supply defensive aircraft to Saudi Arabia that I voted to do so. My friend Senator Mon Moynihan voted against it. I think Saudi Arabia is threatened. I think there is a uh, security danger.
to that country sitting as it does on an enormous reserve of oil that's so crucial to... Uh, a danger that uh, might justify eventually U.S. intervention with military Well, what, uh, it, what it justifies is us taking uh, prudent steps now to help Saudi Arabia with their own defense. And I think one of the first steps along that line uh, yes. was the sale of uh, defensive aircraft. We've also been helping them with their military uh, superstructure in other ways. Well, we don't want to re-argue that issue tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to some of the well, other I, options. I, let me re-argue it, and that's the, the point I would like to make. You know, Angola has five million people. It's a country the size of Western Europe. The Saudi Arabias have seven million people. My position on that jet plane proposal was that we must keep our commitment to Israel, which was the Sinai II agreement. I was at the UN when we, we promised that the Israelis will pull back from those passes in the Sinai, we will sell them these planes. And that you couldn't expect Saudi Arabia to defend itself with 60 planes or 600 planes. The United States and Europe, and Europe, has to defend Saudi Arabia against the Soviet Union. And so the Soviet Union is looking at Saudi Arabia. It's running out of oil in its own terms. And, and this is what is ish at issue. I'd like also to make the point that with respect to Africa, it seems to me that is a European problem. Where the, what happened to the British, God only knows, but the French evidently are, uh, understand their situation. And as, and as was this, uh, Senator McGovern mentioned this conference in uh, French speaking, like Francophone, we say, nations, 26 of them in Africa, in Paris yesterday, where they pleaded for the United States to come. Look, let, let's be specific now about what the United States options are and how each one of you feels, uh, wherever you, where, where each one of you comes down on these options in terms of confronting the Soviet Cuban mm -hmm. threat. Would you be in favor, Senator McGovern, of uh, U.S. military supplies going to countries that are in combat, say, with other countries that are backed by the Soviets and the Cubans. I'd be very, very cautious about that. I, I can't uh, think of any circumstances right now where I would Justify. advocate any acceleration of American military involvement, either through arms or Just personnel. One, one of the so problems with that, you never know when the arms are going to be coming back at you. The Soviets, two years ago, were arming Somalia. And those Soviet arms were used against their new ally, Ethiopia. The Soviets armed Eritrea. And those Soviet arms are now being used against their new ally, Ethiopia. That's one of the complexities that makes it very difficult to argue that it makes mm. sense to dump arms into Africa. Does it make sense to dump arms into I would like to say that the Soviets managed to be on the winning side of all those, uh, those programs. Remember, in, in Ethiopia, and I hope the American people would sort of be calm about this, but also be clear. In Ethiopia, the Soviet forces were commanded by General Petrov, who is not just another general. He is the commander of the Soviet land forces. First time, surely, in the history of Russia that the commander of their land forces was out of the land mass of, of, of Eurasia. As for arms, I'll be here, I'll hear what the president has to say. What I would hope is that this the administration, which is, would, is finally coming to its senses about what is the nature of the Soviet Union. They, when Secretary Vance was going off to Moscow about three weeks ago, he gave an interview in Time magazine in which he said he was sure that President Carter and Mr. Brezhnev sh shared the same goals and aspirations. And that's wrong. They don't. And I think after a year, a year ago, at the speech at Notre Dame, the commencement speech, the president said, let the, let's the Soviet Union and the United States cooperate in the third world. Well, a year later, we see what that cooperation has come to, and the president seems to be coming around. I met with him this morning, a group of senators. He seems to be waking up to the reality that all presidents eventually wake up to, which is the Soviet Union doesn't mean any good to the West. How do each one of you feel about covert help, Senator McGovern? Well, that, uh, uh, we have intelligence operations in, uh, in Africa. We're gathering intelligence there, but I would be opposed to any <coughs> secret paramilitary operations. What about funneling uh, things through third, uh, third parties, anything I, like that? I think it's a mistake. You agree, Absolutely. Senator? No more of that. Mm -hmm. uh, why start a covert operation on Monday, which you will read about on Tuesday? What we do, we must do in the open, and do as, a, as is the end product of a series of 
principles which we propound in the world and calculations which we are open about and says whatever we do, we're doing it for these open reasons. But do you favor any open action on the ground in Africa itself? I can't see any that I would favor now. The president, as I say, the administration is moving, has been talking for about a month uh, about providing aid to Zavimbi if they make the, a sufficient case. I don't know that I would be automatically against it. Let, let me just say that, that you know, we, when we talk about these problems, we always talk as though uh, military options were the only thing open to us. You know, the thing that Africa needs most is not more arms. It needs American food. It needs American technicians. I would rather th see a thousand members of the American Peace Corps and shipments of American dairy products and grain going into Africa over the next 10 years than I would sending in the Marines or sending in the bombers. And uh, this is the course where the United States always <coughs> betters the Soviet Union. We know how to do those things better. I think that uh, eight or 10 years down the road, if we stay with this peaceful, uh, steady effort uh, to assist the uh, countries of Africa in building a better way of life, we're going to have more friends in Africa and be in a stronger position in Africa than is the case with either the Cubans or the Russians. I think Robin wants to explore some other options that you may be interested in, Senator Moynihan. Robin? Yes, uh, one suggestion has been made by the Republican Chairman uh, Bill Brock, <coughs> Senator Moynihan, that we should uh, put pressure on Cuba by stopping all talks about trade, stopping visits of tourists and businessmen, even goes going so far as to get the OPEC nations, particularly Saudi Arabia, to use their influence to stop oil shipments to Cuba. Should we put the pressure on Cuba? I think that uh, uh, Senator Brock, Bill Brock, uh, has been reading Joseph Kraft, the columnist who proposed that Sunday in his column. M I would think that the, the idea that we were going to go on improving relations with Cuba has got now to be very sharply re assessed. Uh, but again, the administration came in thinking it could do that, thinking that, say, if you improve relations, as they did, they did all kinds of things, opened up uh, an office down in Havana, then the Cubans would stop. They didn't. Now, I'd like to say to Senator McGovern, here we have found a disagreement. You say what Africa needs, it does, Africa does not need more arms, and you go on and talk about Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. Well, fine. What I say is, you're, you're, certainly Africa does not need more arms. But what Africa reads needs is less arms, less Russian arms killing Africans. I agree. And if with we that. wanted to do something for the Africans, we would tell the Russians it is a condition of our friendship in a great many places to get out of there and stop killing Africans. Yeah, how and would be we, serious about it, Senator McGovern? How would we do that by well, applying that, pressure on the Cubans or pressure on the Russians? No, I, I agree with uh, Senator Moynihan's objective. I think it'd be wonderful to have the. Uh, Africans disengage, or have the, have the Russians disengage from mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Africa, and to have the Cubans disengage. The question is, how do you do it? How do you do it? Well, I don't know how you do it. I think it's very difficult. They tried for a good many years to get us to uh, disengage from uh, Vietnam, but we stayed over a long period of time, even after most Americans thought it was not in our interest. It's very hard to get uh, sovereign states to do what you want them to do. I, uh, I would hope we'd keep up the uh, diplomatic pressure, that we'd continue to do what we can through every uh, available channel to let them know that uh, we're, uh, we're deeply concerned about their uh, involvement in Africa. But uh, beyond that, I don't know what we can do. I think we've made it clear that we're not going to go forward on the normalization of relations with Cuba as long as they have forces uh, in Africa. The President's been very clear on that. And uh, I don't argue with him about that. Uh, I might say that our previous uh, total boycott of Cuba was unsuccessful, too, in getting them to behave the way we thought they should. I don't think that method has proved to be very helpful. I hope we haven't permanently put aside the possibility that uh, we can take steps one day to normalize relations between these two countries, but it's not in the offing right now. Senator Moynihan, is there anything practical we can do other than sort of just getting mad at the Russians and saying you should be out of there? The, the last thing to do is get mad at the Russians. The first thing to do is get tough with them. And if I was the Secretary of State, I would, I would know exactly what to do. You tell them, there will be no salt. There will be no 
credits. There will be no technical aid to your oil industry. There will be hell raised at the United Nations. You will wish you never went to another international meeting until you get out of Africa and stop killing Africans. Right. And, and do it. And the Russians understand that. I think that we have to see this whole experience as their assessment that we were a defeated nation, as in many ways we were, in the summer of 1975, and, and the effort to expand. The Russians are not normally an expansionist party, but they've been described as like a hotel thief. They go down a corridor testing doors until one opens. They saw an opportunity in 75. We must close it in 1979. Senator McGovern? We've now come to what I think is the first fundamental difference between uh, Senator Moynihan and myself. Mm -hmm. And that's the uh, recommendation of linking the strategic arms limitation talks uh, to what the Soviets are doing in Africa. The implication of that recommendation is that we're somehow doing the Soviets a favor by uh, negotiating an agreement in which both sides agree to limit the uh, production and deployment of nuclear weapons. I don't see it that way at all. I don't think there's anything in Eritrea or in Angola or uh, in Ethiopia that justifies us stopping the uh, negotiations on strategic arms limitation because uh, the success of those negotiations may very well determine whether we control the uh, nuclear race or whether it destroys uh, humanity. We've got to move ahead with all possible speed on negotiations with the Soviets to bring about some limitation on the escalation of these nuclear weapons that have the capacity to destroy life on this planet. And there's no interest in Africa or anywhere else in the world that justifies delaying those talks. Thank you very much, both, uh, both of you senators. I'm glad we finally unearthed one kernel one of disagreement time. there. Thank you both. Good night, Jim. Good night, Robin. That's all for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night. I'm Robert McNeil. Good night. For a transcript, send $1 to the McNeil Lair Report, Box 345, New York, New York, 10019. The McNeil Lair Report was produced by WNET and WTA. They are solely responsible for its content. Funding for this program has been provided by this station and other public television stations and by grants from Exxon Corporation, Allied Chemical Corporation, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.